Today, Apple released a VR headset, Intel announced two new GPUs, AMD's brand new core, and new desktop Ryzen APUs are finally coming. NVIDIA should be worried. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, if you haven't heard, Apple officially announced their long-rumored VR and AR headset called the Apple Vision Pro, and it's definitely a big leap forward. For starters, it has tons of sensors and cameras all over it to not only track your movement in 3D space, but even track your eyes. This is beneficial in multiple ways, like only having to fully render part of a scene you're looking at for added efficiency. Or get this, to select something in the headset, all you have to do is look at it and tap your two fingers together. That's it. And given all of the cameras surrounding this thing, you don't have to lift your hands up. You can tap your fingers in your lap or just about anywhere. When it comes to the screens, there are two. And according to Apple, they have a pixel density that's 64 times that of the iPhone. Now, Apple didn't say which iPhone, but assuming it's a newer model, that kind of resolution should mean you won't be able to see individual pixels at all. The headset also comes with this wild LCD on the outside of it. And one of its features is to display an AI-generated version of your eyes when you're using it for augmented reality and can see outside the headset. This is definitely an interesting one because it lets you better interact with those around you, but it's also odd. Take this example Apple gives in one of their commercials where a dad is filming his kid's birthday party. It's just weird to see someone with a headset on at an important moment in their kid's life. Still, it's definitely an interesting new approach. With that said, the headset has two main issues in my mind. For one, it comes in at a whopping $3,500 so it's definitely not for the average consumer by any means. And second, the battery life is only two hours, and that includes having to carry around a battery pack with it. That's not good if you're wanting to do something like watch a movie on it, given a lot of movies are over two hours. Sure, you can plug it in, but you get the point. Ultimately, the Apple Vision Pro could be a first step at bringing VR and AR to the masses, but the price tag will definitely make that step harder for this first generation. Next up for today, Intel just announced two new GPUs, the Arc Pro A60 and A60M. But first, I know I discuss them a lot, but here's the thing. I used to have a really tough time focusing in school. I like to learn, but I definitely get bored really fast. And that's why Brilliant is such an amazing sponsor. I don't just discuss them on here, I use it. See, instead of teaching you with these long, boring lectures, they take a more hands-on approach by getting you to do it yourself with fun and interesting puzzles, so it's more engaging and keeps my attention way longer. What's even better is that Brilliant was built to teach the STEM field, which includes computer science. They've got courses for beginners, from computer science fundamentals to more advanced stuff like neural networks and even quantum computing, and there's no reason not to try it, because when you visit brilliant.org slash gamer Meld, you can try it out for 30 days free. Plus, when you sign up using brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off the annual premium. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld. Now back to the story, as their name suggests, the Pro A60 GPUs are made for professionals with the A60 model for desktop and the A60M for notebooks. And while they are Intel's most powerful workstation GPUs yet, they're not even faster than Intel's gaming cards. Both the A60 and A60M come with 16 XE cores, with the desktop version getting 12GB of GDDR6 and the mobile variant only getting 8. The A60M comes with a TBP of 95 watts, while the desktop variant still has a very impressive 130 watt TBP. And it's that low power draw that lets the card utilize a single slot cooler to fit into just about anything. According to Intel, it's quote, ideal for computer aided design and modeling, AI inferencing tasks, and media processing in dedicated business environments. Unfortunately, Intel didn't provide a price, but we can assume they're going to be pretty affordable. Next up, we finally learn more about AMD's upcoming Zen 4 C cores set to release in their Epic Bergamo CPUs very soon. Of course, Epic is AMD's server line, but this is really important for consumer CPUs as well, because AMD is likely set to release these little cores on desktop in the future. Either way, in a new report from Semi Analysis, they go over quite a few details regarding these new cores. For one, AMD is apparently able to pack double the cores per CCD with only around a 
10% increase in size. With that said, Intel's efficiency cores are quite a bit smaller, but unlike Intel's cores, AMD's Zen 4C has multi-threading. In fact, Zen 4C looks to basically be a regular Zen 4 core with just smaller clocks and a different layout. Yet that's all it took to receive a big reduction in size. At the end of the day, AMD's new cores are looking like a very interesting take on the efficient core model. Time will tell if it can one-up Intel's version of the big dot little design. And lastly for today, I have some amazing news for those waiting on new desktop APUs. If you remember in my last video, I discussed this official slide released by AMD themselves. The slide is a roadmap for AMD's desktop sockets that gave us some interesting new details, one of which is pretty hard to spot, and I really don't think they intended to reveal it. Right here, it mentions Zen 4 plus Navi 3, and as I said in that video, the issue here is that desktop Ryzen 7000 only comes with Navi 2 integrated GPUs, meaning this points to AMD releasing their newest APUs for desktop. Well, it looks like that is likely the case, as Kepler, a well-known leaker, recently tweeted that both Phoenix and Strixpoint, which is the Zen 5 successor to Phoenix, will be released on the desktop AM5 platform, meaning CPUs with powerful integrated GPUs are finally coming to desktop PCs. Remember that AMD's Ryzen 6000 Rembrandt APUs never made it to desktop, likely because AMD was in the process of transitioning to their AM5 socket, so the most recent AMD APUs are their 5000G series processors. What's great about this new release is that AMD's newest Phoenix APUs have a seriously powerful integrated GPU in them, so much so that this could decimate the entry-level discrete GPU market. Remember that we're going from 8 Vega cores to potentially 12 RDNA 3 cores. Not only that, but don't forget that Phoenix, which is the 7040 series of APUs, use also comes with the new Ryzen AI, which may or may not help in desktop applications, but we shall see. Either way, this is a huge deal, and with Strixpoint also coming, we could see desktop Ryzen APUs become a huge part of gaming in the future. So while that does it for today, are you looking to upgrade to one of these new Ryzen APUs? And what about AMD's new little cores? Let me know down in the comments below. And make sure to check out Brilliant in the description below. And as always, have a great day!